This piece perhaps encapsulates why so many people struggle with conceptual art. It doesn't seem to require much skill, it's not particularly beautiful, and ultimately it feels like a bit of a rip-off. But maybe we're all missing something. I, I wouldn't call this art. But if it's not I art, kinda, uh, what is it? Well, it's, it's something that um, I did because I liked it. Yeah. When most people think of the Renaissance, they think of Italy, a place filled with hugely talented artists like Leonardo and Michelangelo. A generation who, in the 15th century, left the Middle Ages behind and created a glorious new kind of art. More inventive and more exuberant than anything seen before. It's about the painters, sculptors, poets, playwrights, composers, inventors, explorers and craftsmen who together revolutionised the way we saw the world. But then, about a hundred years ago, that system began to fall apart. Now what happened was this. Objects became more and more like artworks and artworks became more and more like objects. Gradually, they began to swap places until, eventually, it became difficult to know which one was which. So you could say anything is art? You, you just could, have. You could say everything is art. But the point is that... Is uh, my shoe art? If you say it is, I have to then judge it on those terms. Well, I think that's a totally ridiculous argument. Well... I never heard anything more ludicrous in my life Well, it's before. sort of... A bicycle wheel. A bottle rack. And most famously, a urinal. Picasso is a traidor of the painting. Picasso knew how to paint. But he didn't know anyone. Until that Gertrude Stein, a Mr. Jotia, a very rich man, said that you have all the money you want, but you invent another ism. Because that woman took care of that the impressionism was a mode. Y transformó el arte en una moda. A partir de 1945, cuando terminó la Segunda Guerra Mundial, los vencedores, al darse cuenta del anarquismo, de Mussolini, Hitler y todo, todos esos problemas, saben muy bien, saben muy bien que tienen razón cuando quieren matar, matar la inteligencia. Que el arte no sea inteligente, que no tenga ideas. La manera es el abstracto. Y el odio, el odio. How did this happen? How did the thousand-year ascent towards artistic perfection and excellence die out? It didn't. It was pushed out. Beginning in the late 19th century, a group dubbed the Impressionists rebelled against the French Academy de Beaux Arts and its demand for classical standards. Whatever their intentions, the new modernists sowed the seeds of aesthetic relativism, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder mentality. The profound, the inspiring, and the beautiful were replaced by the new, the different, and the ugly. Today, the silly, the pointless, and the purely offensive are held up as the best of modern art. Excrement. Manzoni's own excrement. So what does it all mean? Is a turd the ultimate personal ready-made? Who is it meant to provoke? And what was Manzoni's endgame? I'll be honest, I really don't know what to make of this piece. My instinct is that Manzoni's making fun of us. No wonder he looks so proud of himself. Academics, artists and the general public began to become increasingly aware that there wasn't any inherent distinction between a piece of high art and a piece of popular culture. Instead, the entire concept that there's any difference whatsoever is socially constructed. Postmodernism seeks to erase the distinction between high culture and popular culture. And that's why everything's so ugly. From architecture, to art, to music, to entertainment, they're making everything 
hideous. Why is modernist and postmodernist architecture so grotesque? Because after World War II, radical architects launched a revolution against earlier traditionalist styles, believing they represented colonialism, racism, slavery, and exploitation. It was the revenge of mediocrity upon talent and taste. It's all subjective. Bullshit. Look at modern conceptual art. The postmodernist war on absolute truth has spawned the demented belief that anything whatsoever can be considered art. When ugliness is venerated as beauty, we know we're in the depraved late stages of a civilization. Look at popular music. Seriously, what have we contributed? Can you name anything positive? Gangster rap? What's supposed to inspire us? Now dehumanizes us. Look at television. TV's endless portrayal of broken families, emasculated male figures, and aberrant, nihilistic, drood-like youths. Indoctrinating us with the idea that this is actual reality. That this is how we should act too. Once we absorb this kind of degeneracy, our moral filter is irreparably damaged. Talent? Meaning? Authenticity? No. We look for narcissism. The weaponization of popular culture, as I've described it, is merely the reassertion of cultural Marxism. By making the culture that underpins our society completely meaningless and therefore rudderless, it can be easily overthrown. We need to rail against the relativist, collectivist, post-modernist lie. The objective standards of beauty don't exist. We need to encourage a new cultural renaissance that is once again inspired by beauty, talent, and the exaltation of human accomplishment.